Foghorn, the sound that single-handedly converted jump-up producers to roller producers. Hi, this is Andrew, and welcome back to another Music Productions Tips and Tricks tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be exploring the functions of Native Instruments Massive to create a signature Foghorn. So I'm going to begin going by creating a blank preset by going File, New Sound, just to completely create a blank preset. And for this preset, I'm just going to use one oscillator. So in this case, I'm going to use the Scrapyard waveform. So for those who don't know what the Scrapyard is, the Scrapyard is a wavetable of a square wave being produced by granular synthesis, which is based on the principles of sampling. So essentially, if this wavetable is the sound of a square wave being time stretched. So if I perform the wavetable, so you get here sort of standard square, but if I move the wavetable position, along the periodic table, you can hear the sound of the sample being time stretched. So you're getting that sort of gnarly sound, which is really popular, this kind of sound that we're trying to achieve. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to modulate this wavetable position using an LFO. So I want the LFO to move that wavetable position backwards and forwards for me. So I'm going to go ahead and select LFO, click on the little arrow, so I'm holding it in my cursor and assign it to the wavetable position. So now, when I press the key, I don't hear anything, so I need to add depth. So to do that, I click and hold the number, and while holding down on my mouse, I'll move my cursor up to add depth. And this line here actually represents the depth amount. So for example, say if I had my wavetable position at pointing at 12 o'clock, say if I have this line going from nine o'clock to three o'clock, that means when I press the key, the LFO is moving the wavetable position to 9 o'clock, to 3 o'clock, and so forth, backwards and forwards. So I want the LFO just to produce a standard sine wave, so I have a smooth backwards and forwards motion. And I want the speed of the LFO to be in sync with the BPM of my track. So I'm going to select sync. I'm going to change the speed so it kind of flows the track that I'm making. There you go. And I can just sort of tweak this wavetable position to flavour. You find the depth a little goes a long way, so I can actually reduce the amount. There you go. So I've got a nice sort of growly sort of pulsating sound to my um, synth patch. So the next thing I want to do is add that signature pitch gliding, which you get with a foghorn. So I'm going to achieve that by adding a modular envelope. So if I click on envelope three, click on it, so I'm holding it in my cursor and assign it to the pitch of oscillator one by placing it in the box here and setting the value to three, which actually means three semitones. It's actually working on the basis that each number represents a semitone. So by having it the value of three, the pitch range is going to be a minor third, which is going to work with your drum and bass track. So if I press the key now, you can hear a slight glide. So to get that more in tune, if I remove the sustain, you can hear it goes down by three semitones. And if I want it to last longer, I just have to increase the decay. So the time it takes to go from the top semitone back down to the roots of whatever key I'm pressing, it just takes longer. There you go, I like the sound of that. So the next thing I'm gonna add is a little bit more grit to my sound. So I'm gonna achieve that with the modulation oscillator. And what the modulation oscillator does, instead of producing the sound, you use it to control the other oscillators in your patch to actually add more harmonics. And the most popular setting is the phase modulation, which is a form of FM synthesis. And that's when the wave form of an oscillator is used to shake so modulate the pitch of another oscillator so quick that it's actually generating harmonic overtones, which usually sound quite cold and metallic, which is ideal for the sound that we're trying to achieve. So I'm going to assign the phase modulation to oscillator one in my matrix. So it's now being applied to this oscillator one. And if I add the depth, so you can hear you're getting that really harsh FM sound. So to assign a modulator envelope to the modulation OSC as well, that means the pitch of the modulation OSC will move in sync with oscillator one. 
So there you go, so I've got the best of both worlds. So if I remove that and add the phase mod. There you go, so I'm getting more grit, more of a growl. I can even go a bit further with that by going into voicing and adding unison. So at the moment, when I press one key, we're hearing one voice. But if I, if I stack the voices up to eight, so when I press the key, Massive's going to stack eight versions of that sound on top of each other to create a huge sound. So comparison, one voice, eight. Perfect. I'm going to set it to mono while I'm here, so that means no notes can overlap each other, which is kind of the setting you want for a bass patch. There you go. So with a patch like this, it's all about distortion. It's about adding distortion on top of distortion. So I'm going to start by going in the insert effects and assigning a parabolic shaper. So assigning that. The next thing I want to do is add a low pass filter to sort of tame those harmonics and sort of sculpture the sound. So instead of going for a standard low pass, I'm actually going to go for the scream low pass filter, which is just a standard filter, but I've added distortion, which is labeled screen. So you can hear when the oscillator is going through that filter, you can hear it's got more harmonics, more sort of distortion. So it's beginning to sound pretty aggressive already. So I want that kind of signature fog horn where you have a burst of harmonics and it fades out over time. So I'm just going to use the same modular envelope that I used to modulate the pitch, but also modulate the filter cutoff. So if I click on it and assign it to the cutoff, and yet again, if I click on the number and by holding down the mouse, move the cursor up to increase the depth. So at the moment, the range is going from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock. So you can hear sort of that burst of harmonics and hear that movement. I'm just going to tweak it to taste. There you go, so that sounds pretty fat. And I'm going to take advantage of the dual filters in Massive and have it that the oscillator has been filtered by filter one, then the signal comes out of filter one, then goes into filter two for further filter modulation or filter, and then out into the effects. So if I set the filter to series, so that sets it up, the signal goes from oscillator one to filter one, out of filter one to filter two, and set the mix that we only hear the signal going out of filter two. So if I turn that up, and I'm gonna add a second filter, and I'm gonna go for a band reject. What that does, that cuts a hole, it sort of creates a notch in the sounds. So you can get the best of both worlds, you can get a bit of a clean and heavy sound. So you can hear when I move the cutoff now, I'm hearing the sound going through a low pass filter as well as a band reject and it sort of goes a little bit in the neurofunk sort of territory. There you go, it sounds pretty cool. I'm going to add yet again some more distortions. I'm going to go insert two and I'm going to add a hard clipper because why not? There you go, so that's beginning to sound pretty fat. But I'm just going to watch the levels here in the masters. I'm just going to turn that down a little bit. There you go. And I'm also just going to soften the attack on the volume. So I'm going to go for envelope four and just soften that attack a little bit. There you go, so we're almost there. So I've got two distortions applied already, but I'm going to add a further third. I'm going to go into the effects. I'm going to add a Teletube. And I'm going to finish off the patch in Massive by adding a Dimension Expander, which kind of expands it and gives more width and depth to the patch itself. Yeah, again, watching those levels. So I'm pretty happy with the patch. So to add some finishing touches, I'm going to add some reverb and some more distortions. So the reverb I'm using is, I'm just gonna go for the fusion field, which you can, to be honest, you can use any reverb uh, plugin. You can use any long tail reverb, 
But I'm using Fusion Field because it draws the reverbs mist, which is wicked in itself. And if I play that now, it gives that long reverb, gives that really dramatic distortion, that classic foghorn. But I'm going to go a little bit further with it and I'm going to add even more distortion. So what my trick is, is to distort the sound after the reverb, so the reverb tail gets distorted as well. So that sounds even harsher. And just to finish this off, I'm going to add some EQ and some compression just to tame it to make it so it fits into my track. So if I play the patch now. There we go. So I'm going to hear it in the mix. I'm going to put it with the rest of the song and see how it sounds. There you go, one signature foghorn sound. So I'm going to let the track play out and I'm going to say thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and I'll see you next time.